Hello and welcome to a Key Smash Studios video. Today we're going to be talking about how to make a shield pop up over a character in a 2D side scroller. Something like this that it pops up and then after a little bit of time disappears. Additionally, it moves with the character as well as providing protection from projectiles that would otherwise normally harm the character and lower the health. So in order to do this, we need to have a couple things on hand and do a little bit of coding, and we'll hop through that now. First and foremost, we need to have a shield sprite that goes over the player. All this is is just a sprite that you put as a child of the player, and mine is just this simple blue circle I made in Photoshop. It's about 60% um, opacity, meaning that 40% of the light behind it, when it's activated, goes through it. Simply having that shield isn't enough. We need to code to make sure that it works. So if it's always on and we're playing, uh, it, it'll just follow around the character. Um, so we need to have this work only when we tell it to. So I'm going to, as default, have it be off and then only turn it on when we need it to be turned on. So how do we do that in our code? Well, we need to do two things to make this happen. First, we need a reference to this shield that's in our in our game. And second, we need a boolean that's going to tell us when we are shielded and when we are not. So let's go ahead and code the boolean up first. So let's just say we have a private bool and we're going to call this shielded. Are we actively being shielded or not? And it's a good idea when you make a boolean to always instantiate it and start. So I'm just going to say shielded is equal to false because at the start of the game we most likely will not be shielded. The second thing that we need is a reference to that shield in the editor itself. So I'm going to use a serialized field to do this. You can use a, pro a public game object, but if I do a serialized field with a private game object, it still works the same way and it's just a little bit more secure. So I would recommend that, but you can certainly do a public. So we have this private game object. We're going to call this a shield and then we're going to say, okay. And what this is going to do, assuming that we've saved here, is when we come to our player, where that player controller script is attached, we'll see that there's a shield thing here, and we can just click and drag this shield game object and drop it right into that shield opening. So again, the shield that is now turned off is taken and dropped right into that shield slot on the player controller. And what that's going to allow us to do is turn it off and on from within our script. So let's go ahead and save that, and we'll go back to our script and do some of the actual coding. So normally we would want to put any check for a key or a button or some type of input check in update, uh, but we want to do a little more code than that, so we're going to create a function for it and then just call the function in update. So what we'll do is we're going to create a function called check shield, and in that check shield we're just going to do the check to see if we're activating the shield. So since we're doing that and we would normally be checking for things to be called an update, we're going to call our function there so it happens in update anyways and it's just a little bit more organized. So in our check shield, we need to check and see if we are calling for the shield. So if we have an input and we're getting a key from that input, and we'll say, you know, let's do a key code E. So if we have an input and that key code is E, um, we're going to have something happen. I'm going to add a little thing onto this, and I will explain it in just a second. I'm going to say, and we're not shielded. So I only want to be able to press my shield if I'm not actively shielding at the moment. And what that allows us to do is to make sure that we don't call this multiple times and stack it up and confuse the computer and confuse the code. We can only call it if we're not actively shielding. And that's just going to stop us from making multiple calls and we'll be good. So when we call the shield, we have two things that need to happen. First, we need to turn on the sprite that's on top of the player. And second, we need to swap that Boolean around. So we're going to turn on the sprite. We grab that shield, we're going to say set active, and this is just a boolean whether it's true or false. So 
yes, we want it to be turned on, so that's true. And our Boolean that we have here, we're going to mirror that and say that it is also true. Now, right here, we're going to put the code for turning off the shield. Uh, but I'm going to do that right after we code the function to turn off the shield. So let's put our function here. I'm going to call this no shield. So we have this function called no shield, no shield, and we just need to do the opposite of what our first one did. So we'll only call this, we don't need to put a check in this, we'll only call this when we know we're turning off the shield. So all we need to do is set our shield to no longer active. So this is now false. And shielded, oh, shielded is now equal to false as well. That's the only thing we need to do in there. It'll turn off the, sh the, the sprite of the shield, and it'll turn off our code version of the shield as well. So as far as the code that goes to make that happen, C Sharp has this really great function called invoke. And invoke will allow you to call a function that is a name after a certain amount of time. So let's say three seconds. We will call whatever function we put in between these quotations. So we have this great function that we just made called no shield, and it has to be perfect spelling and capitalization. It will call the function, it will search the script for a function called no shield and call it three seconds later. That's what invoke does. It's really great in a situation like this because we press the shield and regardless of where we are in the game, how long we've been in the game or anything like that, three seconds later and exactly three seconds later, it will call the function no shield and turn off the shield. That's pretty cool and it works really well. So if we come here into our game, uh, we hit shield, it turns on the shield, three seconds later it turns off. That's great and all, we have not yet coded the way to make that no longer take damage though. So we're going to need to come down to collisions and everybody's collisions is going to be a little bit different. In this particular game, I have evil grapes that are shooting these grape shots at the player. So if I come here all the way over, You can see here's the grape and he's shooting a grape shot across at the player. And if I get hit by this grape shot, I take 25 health. And right now if I shield, nothing happens because I've not coded that to change anything at all. So we need to code that to make that happen. And the code to make that happen, it says, you know, if something collides with the player and it has the tag grape shot, the player takes 25 health of damage. And then that, that animation that hits the player gets turned off. That's great. Um, we don't need to change this turn off right here, right? That's going to happen regardless of whether or not we're shielded. If it collides with us when we're shielded, it still disappears. If it collides with us when we're not shielded, it still disappears. The only thing that changes is whether or not we take the damage. So we need to put an if statement here and say if we're not shielded, if we are not shielded, then and only then do we take the damage. So if our shield is up, we will take no damage. The game object that runs into the player will still be turned off. But if it's down, then we take 25 points of health damage and we're good to go. And we'll see that reflect in the game when we go visit our friendly rape dude that's shooting us. All right, so there's our damage. If I'm shielded, I'm no longer taking the damage, but the grape shot still disappears. We're taking damage, it's disappearing. We're shielded, it's still disappearing. The shield is functioning exactly how we want it to function. So there you have it, a really simple way to set up a shield around a 2D side scroller.
If this has been helpful, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, all that jazz. It really does help us out. There are several links in the description below from our Twitch channel to our Patreon. If you would like to support us in any way, check out those links for your more information. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, things of that nature, please let us know down in the comments below or in the link in the description below. You can find our Discord, and we have a questions and support channel in there, and we're always more than happy to help. I hope this has been helpful, and hopefully we'll see you next week. Thank you.